Because the Earl Sisters are brothers, brothers and sisters. We come now today at this time here is the beginning of fall. And this is a time of uh, busyness, time of harvesting, uh, time of gathering uh, in preparation for winter that is coming soon. And so uh, as we think about harvesting and gathering in, the, in our many and varied ways, we want to take time to uh, think about our Creator and our relationship with our Creator. And think about what it means to do right by our Creator, by our family, our community, and each other. So, in that sense, we want to open up our Hebrew Bibles today uh, to Isaiah 40, 25 through 31, as we begin our exploration about what it means to be soaring with the eagles. So Isaiah 40, 25 through 31. To whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name because God is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? God's way is hidden, or excuse me, my way is hidden from God, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? God is the everlasting God. The creator of the ends of the earth. God does not faint or grow weary. God's understanding is unsearchable. God gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youth will faint and be weary and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait on God shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And our second reading from today is also from the Hebrew Bible. Do you want to turn to Psalm 103, Psalm 103, verses 1 through 5. Bless God, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Bless God, O oh my soul, and do not forget all God's benefits. Who forgives all your iniquity? Who heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from the pit? Who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy? Who satisfies you with good as long as you live? so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Okay, here are the words of the Hebrew Bible. And today we think about, as we come now, in this context, we think about where was Isaiah, or the writers of Isaiah, and Psalms, the psalmist in this particular sense, coming from, and they're they're both reflecting on, in a sense, how eagle represents the power of prayer and healing, renewal, in that sense. Uh, they both speak about this same context. 
and it shows us that uh, you know when we pay attention to God, when we go in God's way, that our prayers have power that can help those in need. And uh, you know Isaiah was a prophet. And when we look at the different books in Isaiah, you know, there is some debate over whether or not uh, Isaiah is one continuous book or three different books that were combined together over time. And in that sense, we see the beginning of Isaiah 40 is a book that was the uh, beginning of the second book, the second book of Isaiah. But it also can be put into the context of the first book of Isaiah. So we think about how the audacious the Hebrews were at this point because the beginning of the second book is noted as being the pre-trial statement made by God to the Israelites who were grumpy and complaining that God had abandoned them, had turned their backs on them, and were not, was not, God wasn't keeping God's part, keeping God's word. And so God is coming this way in this challenge here, and, uh, and actually making this statement through Isaiah, or the prophet, uh, to the people about, well, uh, who do you people think you are? And look what I've done for you. And getting ready to go through this trial process. But the, the irony to this is God actually is being the judge of the trial. And the trial takes place over, over many books. I think it was all the way up through chapter 7 or 8. And that's the whole. But, but this, this section right here, Isaiah 40, uh, is the beginning of the pre-trial statement and the beginning of the trial process. And in this statement, in this reading that we saw today, uh, when we think about the context of the eagle, which in the Judaic culture, the eagle represents mercy. And what does it mean for God to have mercy upon us? In our Indian religious tradition, we often pray for God to have pity and have mercy upon us. And so we think about that in this context, in Isaiah and in Psalms, to where, uh, what is having mercy upon us? Well, mercy comes from God being able to look upon human beings and seeing how small we are, how much uh, we suffer, how challenging our lives are, how challenging we often make our lives for ourselves. And so we think about what it means for God to have mercy upon us and we gain a better understanding of why the Jewish people thought of the ego in this sense as a messenger of God's mercy or the presence of God's mercy. And, uh, you know, uh, I was trying to remember the name of the word for ego, but I know it's often confused with vulture because they're just big birds that fly really high up. So sometimes, there are a lot of different verses, like over 30 of them in the Hebrew Bible, about eagles and vultures, and sometimes they're confused. But in this sense, in the context that we are looking at here, they're specifically identifying the eagle. And so, uh, when we think of Isaiah, we see that God has made a promise here. In the pre-trial statement, God is saying flat out, those who, uh, let's see where it is, I'm over here. Those, in verse 31 here, Isaiah 40, 31, those who wait for God, wait for God, you know, trust in God, have patience, allow God to do things on God's terms, in God's time, and not our expectations of what God should do. This is really a, a challenging dynamic for us because it requires us to realize that we're not the ones in charge. God's in charge. But what we are required to do is to live according to God's will. And that means 
living on God's time. God takes care of things when God's ready to take care of things. Sometimes it's right now. Sometimes it's later. Sometimes it's in a way that we would not have considered. But God's through God's wisdom gains a response, and there's always a response in one form or another that lets us know that God is active in our lives, present in our lives, each and every one of us. You've got to think about how dynamic that is. And that's what uh, the prophet is addressing here, because the prophet is identifying as God is speaking through the prophet in first person, God is stating, how can you possibly understand my wisdom? How can you possibly understand how I think? And, and that's true. We can't. We are not capable of that. And it's not right or wrong, it's not good or bad, it's just how it is. And so part of walking in God's footsteps, walking God this trail that we're on, individual journey, is to uh, realize that when we pray and we trust in God, our prayers are heard. And God is moving to answer those prayers. And just as we pray with the sacred pipe, we know that it takes time sometimes for those prayers to be answered. Other times, it is right that they be answered immediately in the way that we expect, and other times it is answered differently in the way that God needs it to be answered. Doing what's best for everyone involved and not just ourselves. And that puts it into a different context, which is not, uh, we are in community and it's not consistent with uh, the mainline culture in that respect, where individualism wants people to, you know, God, people want God to answer for them right here, right now, regardless of the consequences to anybody else. In our Indian religious tradition, we rely upon God to answer prayers in a way that is best for everyone involved, and we pray that way to make sure that what comes out of it, what our prayers that we are asking for, I'm not going to bring harm to anyone else, but it's going to do what's best for everyone. God's going to act in a way that's best for everyone in the great scheme of things, in the great plan. When we look at the psalmist, God calls upon us, and through the psalmist, to adopt an attitude of gratitude about these things. And that's what the psalmist is doing. The, the psalmist is doing praise and thanksgiving. Acknowledging that God's promise can be trusted. That it will endure. And it will be active in our lives. And that promise is very clear. Those who trust in God, those who bless God, those who... Uh, are forgiven of our wrongdoings, get the support that we need to be well and have good lives. Our, our visions are brought to reality. You know, these things are important. And that's what the psalmist is saying, is that God cares for us. And because of that, we should be grateful for this. We should adopt that gratitude, attitude of gratitude, celebrating our relationship with God, being grateful, for having God in our lives. And God also affirms, you know, repeatedly over time, and you think about this, Isaiah, that God spoke that promise, the psalmist, that promise is affirmed over many centuries apart. So you're looking at, for a great time, you're looking at how God is consistent in this context. And we know that, you know, put this into cultural context, but you know, ancient um, Judaic culture, many people thought that when the, uh, when the eagle shed its feathers, molted, and the new feathers came in, that the eagle was given new life, new birth, restored in youth. And so that's where they're coming from in the state. But if you know every one of us, regardless of whether we are 15 years old, 50 years old, or 80 years old. We know in our soul, in our hearts, that we're still young. 
I'm sitting here 55 years old with gray hair and I still have the same passion, the same vigor, the same commitment that I did when I was 17 years old. So I know that my spirit is still young and you know it too. So that vigor, that youth is renewed, is strengthened if we trust in God, regardless of how our bodies age in time. Because there is, a, there is going to be a transition. In our Indian religious tradition, that is consistent with what we are seeing in Isaiah and Psalm. And that is, in our Indian religious tradition, when we think about eagle medicine, we think about the East, where the sunrise is. It's also the place of youth. Eagle medicine is about new life, new beginning. Eagle medicine is for healing. In our Indian religious tradition, when we're doing healing work, we use, we often use the eagle feather for healing. I know many dancers that have the, their outfits are, are made with eagle feathers, and this is for power, because that healing power comes through that eagle medicine. People dance and pray for their family members. I'm a gourd dancer. I dance and pray for the people. That's every one of those dances that gourd dancers do is a prayer dance. And so we are relying upon God's power to move through us in our dance to help the people out. In a way, we are suffering for the people, especially those of us who have physical challenges who are still dancing. And so we think about those things in that context. The East, the eagle medicine, is new life, new beginning, is used for healing ceremony for bringing power to the people from our Creator. And in the South, the turkey is considered the South Eagle. Here in North America, I don't know if it's consistent around the world, but here in North America, many Indian cultures consider, American Indian cultures consider the, the turkey to be the South Eagle, having the same power as the eagle does. And so you can use eagle feather, turkey feather, to accomplish the same goal. It's a way of helping us to focus on God's presence while the healing is going on, while the new life, the restoration, the, the blessing of power is being bestowed. All power comes from God, works through us, works through many things. God created everything. Everything has God's presence and power. And, uh, you know, Grandfather uh, R.T. used to tell the story about... Uh, <laughs> His battle with the devil. Yeah, I just remembered that. I'll, have, I'll share this story with you about Grandpa. Well, he loved to tell this story over and over again. About uh, he was uh, he was helping some folks who were in a bad way, and uh, one night he had a he had a vision uh, where he was in this sacred space and surrounded by lots of people who needed help, and the devil came to stop him. Well, Grandpa was an expert in Indian martial arts, American Indian martial arts, which a lot of people don't know that American Indians, we have our own form of martial arts. And Grandpa was an expert in that, and uh, that's why he was involved in the, Billy, the creation of the Billy Jack movie. He was a consultant for the Billy Jack movies, and he was in the Billy, the, the first one, anyway, the second one. The first two, he was in the first two uh, Billy Jack movies that I recall. And, uh, but, uh, so he had this, this vision, devil came and they duked it out, you know, they were, they were fighting and punching and he was getting all tired and wore out. Finally, he wouldn't give up because he relied upon God for his strength and his power. And the devil couldn't stand up to him. So the devil quit and left. And I remember this was a humility story because he woke up and he was telling grand, grandmother about this dream of his, this vision dream where he fought the devil and he, and he won, but it took a long time and he was exhausted. And when he was done, he looked at her and she just, she lowered her head and was shaking her head. And he was like, what? So, well, why'd you go to all that trouble? I said, what do you mean why'd I go to all that trouble? said, yeah, all you had to do is pick up an eagle feather and that would have done it. 
And he just, that was it, you know, and, and it's hilarious when he tells it that way. But it's true, you know, because in our tradition, and when you think about it, if he had picked up that eagle feather, boom, it would have been over in a split second. But he did it the hard way, which, you know, some of us are just that way. We like to do things the hard way. Beating our head against the wall is, is something we're kind of into, I guess. But, uh, you know, you think about that, that's what that kind of power represents. It gives, you know, trusting in God, relying in God, having that relationship with God gives us the strength and the courage and the power of the ego to be able to stand against those who seek to abuse, exploit, and oppress others for personal gain, and to stop us from being of good service. And I guarantee you, there are many people in this world who are devoted to stopping those who are seeking to help improve the quality of life for all people. And it's all for their own personal gain. And so if we have to be diligent, we have to be vigilant, and we have to trust in God as the prophet, as God calls upon us to do in the prophet of Isaiah, through the prophet Isaiah, and through the psalmist here, with this promise that if we trust in the power of our prayers, that God will hear us. It also it requires us to have an understanding that trust in Him in the power of prayer requires us to have the courage to rely upon God so that we may soar with the eagles. Walk in beauty.